A very big reason why I have been calling for this EV tax not to be going to law in Australia is because of the health problems that are caused by internal combustion. A new study has exposed the fact that car pollution is deadlier than the entire road toll in Australia. And this applies to the United States as much as it does to Europe. The same findings will be evident in your, your locations. You'll find that the pollution from cars is killing more people than all the accidents on the roads in your countries put together. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. New research has found that vehicle air pollution is attributable to around 2,000 premature deaths every year in Australia, hundreds more than the actual fatalities recorded on the road. Imagine if Australia's and America's and Europe's entire car fleets were all electric. We could prevent thousands and thousands of premature deaths. If we put taxes on EVs, if we say EVs, you're the only cars on the road that should have this EV tax where people have to look at their logbooks and tell the government when they drove their car, take a photo of their odometers and then pay the taxes, that will discourage EV adoption and it will slow down this movement away from internal combustion, which will help save lives. Air pollution from motor vehicles is responsible for more premature deaths every year than the national road toll said this study. The research was conducted at Safe Air through the University of Tasmania and published in the journal Environmental Research. It says that traffic related air pollution is attributable to 1,864 premature deaths annually. Now this study doesn't take into consideration there could be a lot more than this. We don't know we don't know if the deaths coming from lung cancer, 35% of all lung cancer sufferers in Australia have never smoked a cigarette. We don't know if, if any of them are being uh, getting lung cancer from pollution. We don't know. It's very possible. And some researchers, and I myself believe that's the most probable cause. This is 504 more lives than compared to the country's road toll in the 12 months leading up to July 31, 2025, of 1,360. In other words, far more people are dying prematurely from air pollution, from cars, than they are from the actual road toll itself. Prior research estimated the traffic pollution was responsible for 11,105 premature deaths in Australia, as well as 66,000 active asthma cases and 12,210 cardiovascular hospitalizations annually. So one study has come out and said 11,100 premature deaths every year in Australia are responsible, are the result of internal combustion engine cars. The other study has said it's closer to 2,000. I mean, pick a number in between. No matter how you look at this, it's incredibly damning. Now, the earlier study was actually based on similar research conducted in New Zealand that extrapolated to Australia and did not include a minimum threshold for exposure to air pollution as seen in the latest data. Motor vehicles are said to be responsible for 51% of earlier than expected deaths from air pollution. And this is the single largest source contribution to the mortality burden from air pollution in Australia. The Tasmanian study is the first of its kind in Australia to analyze the health impact of nitrogen dioxide or NO2. It also examines the effects of particulate matter from car exhaust, PM 2.5. These pollutants originate from the tailpipe emissions of motor vehicles, as well as through wear of brakes and tires, and have been linked to health issues such as lung and heart disease. Researchers identified the concentrations of PM2.5 and NO2 in the air, primarily those particulates come from diesel, with data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics calculated the mortality rates of the population state by state. New South Wales and Victoria, the country's two most popular states with the most traffic, were found to be responsible for nearly three quarters or 72.5% of premature deaths attributed to TRAP in the country. The study calls attention to the need, or the urgent need, I think, to address this topic through legislation that supports low emissions vehicles, including plug-in hybrids, electric vehicles, alongside public and active transport, and to get more people out of internal combustion cars into just something else. Anything else would be a better option.
You can see the numbers here. It's the worst in New South Wales, 814, uh, followed by Victoria in second with 518. To me, even one is too much. Uh, two is way too much. 2,000 is uh, utterly ludicrous. This is the kind of research that I think we need to consider. We need to remember when, personally, I did a video on how the EV tax in Australia is a scam and I exposed the reasons why. A lot of people who didn't watch it on Facebook, they have reacted angrily to this. Um, most of them, I believe, didn't watch the, the video, didn't watch my points in there. But even a lot of EV fans are saying that I'm wrong. EVs should be paying taxes, right? They should be paying a road tax. We should all pay our fair share. Now, in my video, I analyze why it wasn't a fair share. This was one of the reasons why. I mean, if we can reduce these 2,000 premature deaths per year to, say, zero, is that worth getting everyone into EVs? Is that worth avoiding paying EV taxes for a few years in order to speed up EV adoption? I think it is. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. You've probably heard the news recently. Australia is set to implement a tax on electric cars. When I say a tax, I mean, it's gonna be worse than a tax because you're gonna to have to keep a logbook right down where you go. Basically, the government will have to be able to be like your big brother, follow you around. And this will be a big disincentive from purchasing an electric car. Now, when I did a video on this, some people didn't like my video. They believe electric cars should be taxed. However, there's a counter argument that makes a lot more sense. Here's what it is. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Today, I received this message from Peter. Peter said this, check your facts. Hi all, recently I've been researching the whole excise road building road use scenario in Australia. Basically, it's a lot of bollocks. I am dumbfounded that the Treasury Department in Australia has not done the same, or they have, and they're pretending they haven't, and cannot believe what I'm hearing from the Economic Summit. The road user charge on EVs is complete bullshit, and we need a class action to stop it now before the rot sets in class action lawsuit. I invite everyone to check these facts with Google. Fuel excise revenue in 2024, $17 billion. The government says that fuel excise revenue of $17 billion is used to maintain and build roads all across Australia. Is that actually true? Well, no. But if you look at road projects funded through that actual money, that $17 billion, only $6 billion of that $17 billion was actually used. And of that $6 billion, $5 billion was for two pet freeway projects that only benefit Sydney and Melbourne, not the rest of Australia. But what about the rest of the money? The other $11 billion, where did it go? It just went to the federal government. They didn't actually use it for roads at all. How are all other roads in Australia actually funded? 